So I'll be sitting comfortably. <laughs> Shall I begin? <laughs> and I'll say that um, I came to uh, Fanny Wilkinson not through any knowledge whatsoever originally of landscape architecture, um, but uh, as part of a project that I was working on on the Garrett family, that's Elizabeth Garrett Anderson and Millicent Garrett Fawcett and uh, a sister, Agnes Garrett, who was the first professional woman interior designer. And uh, I stumbled across Fanny and uh, I found her absolutely fascinating and uh, I, I did a lot of research on her. Because walking through London's uh, many open spaces, particularly in the small parks and squares, few people will give much thought to how they came into being and we'd be surprised to learn that many were originally landscaped in the late 19th century by a woman. Uh, Fanny Wilkinson um, lived a very long, busy and active and very effective life, uh, but she left no private letters, diaries or direct descendants, so there's nothing um, of hers uh, that I can have been able to find in any archive. I mean, so she's really been written out. and. Uh, but although her work, um, although her um, uh, work remains, she herself has all but disappeared. And the first mention of her in connection with professional horticulture uh, occurs in 1883 when she was appointed to the Council of the Curl Society, which was an organisation founded in 1877 by Octavia Hill and her sister Miranda in order to, quote, give pleasure to the poor. Her, the remit uh, given to Fanny was to advise in matters connected with the laying out and improvements of churchyards, gardens, squares, etc. And this, I think, is likely to have been the first occasion that a woman was credited with a formal position as a landscape gardener. Now, Fanny had been born in Manchester in 1855 and she was the eldest daughter of Eason Wilkinson who was one of the city's leading doctors. But the family didn't rely solely on uh, the income from his medical practice because Wilkinson had inherited two, although well, he'd inherited from his first wife in fact, two very prosperous estates on the southern outskirts of York. And uh, by 1881, which was actually three years after his death, the family moved uh, from Manchester to one of these, Middlethorpe Hall on the outskirts of York, which is now a most lovely hotel, I thoroughly recommend it. <laughs> it's in a large uh, late 17th century house. And uh, yes, Fanny had um, three sisters and uh, at least one brother. And they, there they lived very comfortably, um, but the daughters of the family weren't content uh, merely to enjoy county life. And by the end of 1883, Fanny had completed an 18 month course in landscape architecture at the Crystal Palace School of Landscape Gardening and Practical <coughs> Horticulture. And the principal of this was Edward Milner, who earlier in his career had been assistant to Joseph Paxton, I'm sure you all know that. Um, founded in 1881, the school offered um, a two year course which comprised six months of practical gardening and floriculture followed by six months of surveying and office work and 12 months of practical professional work. And there aren't uh, any, as I say, any letters or diaries um, that allow us any insight into why Fanny uh, decided to pursue this particular career. Only her comment when she was interviewed by a journalist in 1890. Um, and she said, I was always fond of gardening as a child and I took it up because I felt it suited me and I wanted to do something. When my father died, we went to live in our own place near York, and there I began to devote myself to gardening in a practical way. There's no suggestion that her decision upset uh, her family at all, and she wouldn't have lacked encouragement, for by this time she and her sisters were very well acquainted with Millicent Fawcett, uh, soon to be leader of the Women's Suffrage <coughs> Campaign, and her sister Agnes, who, as I said, ran the business as an interior designer. and in the idea uh, that it was necessary uh, for women to gain a professional training uh, before embarking on a career uh, as would a man was very much a tenant, uh, tenant of the women of the Garrett Circle. <clears throat> and by the late 
19th century, Fanny and her sister Louisa were living next door but one in Gower Street to Millicent Fawcett and Agnes Garrett. Uh, there's a plaque on that house, number two, Gower Street, to Millicent. And in, 18, in 1900, the ties between the two families were brought in, uh, even closer when Louisa married George Garrett, who was Millicent's younger, youngest brother. In the course of her 1890 interview, Fanny Wilkinson made clear that her admittance to the Crystal Palace classes had been fought with difficulty. Uh, intended as they were uh, for the uh, men of the artisan class, uh, not for an upper middle class woman. Uh, but Fanny had persevered, mentioning that during her training she had had to work very hard to master the mysteries of taking surveys, levelling and striking out the ground, drawing plans to scale and making estimates, but that she liked the life exceedingly. This is all from the 1890 interview. She remarked that she preferred to employ her own men, but that often my customers prefer that their own men should work under me. This is often a stumbling block, since the gardeners occasionally imagine they know better, and they are often stupid and pig-headed. I have a great bother with them now and then. <laughs> her interviewer was clearly intrigued at the thought of, quote, this extremely uh, nice-looking woman with bright sunny face, which though a little tanned by exposure to the open air, has a fresh appearance of good health and contentment. Um, so she was uh, intrigued at the thought of her being in the position of directly superintending uh, manual work. Domestic gardening had long, of course, been considered a womanly pursuit, but running a business that involved supervising the work of these male gardeners, as well as producing designs, hard landscaping, dealing with horticulture suppliers, and keeping abreast with the accounts was not. Uh, in 1887, when the Curl Society undertook the laying out of the eight acres of Vauxhall Park, it was to Fanny Wilkinson that the commission was given. This project was very much a Garrett enterprise, because uh, Millicent Fawcett had led a campaign to save as an open space uh, the area in Lambeth where she and her late husband Henry, Henry Fawcett, had for some years rented a house. And it, in fact, it had been sold to, the land had been sold to a developer, but they managed to um, get uh, together um, enough money for it all to be bought back. And at the opening ceremony in July 1890, um, Fanny uh, was presented to the Prince of Wales. I think we may have a picture of that. There we are. Uh, who supported, who, who reportedly received her with kind words of congratulation. By mid-1884, Fanny was, not, was working not only for the Curl Society, um, but had been elected honorary uh, landscape gardener to the Metropolitan Public Gardens Boulevard and Playground Association, founded in 1882 by Lord Brabazon who was later known as Lord Meath, in order to secure unused open spaces and lay them out for the benefit of the inhabitants of the metropolis. Brab Brabazon was a member of the Curl but felt that much more could be done to capitalise on the passing of the 1881 Metropolitan Open Spaces Act, by which it became possible for disused burial grounds to be transferred directly to local authorities, together with the power to uh, use public funds to maintain them as public gardens. Uh, and there was always a uh, tension really between uh, the curl <laughs> and, uh, uh, and uh, what was known as the MPGA, uh, but um, MPGA stormed ahead. And although there's little information about Fanny's work for the curl, her involvement with the MG MPGA can be clearly traced through the society's uh, minutes. And those, handily, if uh, anybody in this area, are actually held now at the Metropolitan Archives. When I originally consulted them, they were in the Guildhall, but they, they've been transferred. And they're extensive, and um, I mean, I just really, I suppose, have touched the surface, um, rooting out material on uh, Fanny. For 19 years, she attended almost every meeting of the association and prepared the plans, obtained the estimates and supervised the laying out of over 75 public gardens in London. For the first 16 months or so, her position really was honorary, that is, she did the work but wasn't paid. However, in 1886, she wrote to Lord Brabazon that, I feel it would be better for me to drop the on and make a charge which would fully cover all expenses. 
Thus, barely two years after obtaining her professional qualification, Fanny was able to step from uh, behind the, on, uh, sort of shield of an honorary title and reveal herself as a practical professional woman. When interviewed uh, in 1890, she remarked, I have been most successful in getting work. I have all the work of the Metropolitan Public Gardens Association and the Curl Society. I plan, lay out and supervise whatever is required by them. In reply to a question about whether she charged much for her work, she responded smartly that, I certainly do not let myself be underpaid as many women do. There are people who write to me because I am a woman and think I will ask less than a man. That I will never do. I know my profession and charge accordingly as all women should do. The, Fanny, the gardens designed by Fanny um, for the MPGA spanned London from Wandsworth to Plasto and from Camberwell to Haverstock Hill. In fact, if you're walking back to Angel Tube, there's one of her gardens just um, if you turn at City University just up St John Street, uh, there's Northampton Square there and uh, she, that was one of the ones she laid out. Um, and the majority of these gardens, as one might expect from an association dedicated to ameliorating the life uh, of the most disadvantaged, was concentrated in the East End, an area with which Fanny must have become intimately acquainted and included, among many others, the laying out of the disused churchyards or burial grounds of, for instance, um, St Mary's Haggerston, St Botolph's Allgate, um, and uh, uh, St John at Hackney and Christchurch Spitalfields. Um, I've got my pictures right. Perhaps we, oh, good, I think we missed one. I think we missed one. Yeah. Yes, there's a bottle. Yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> You're getting on. That was some, well, some bottles there. And um, now, yes, we, this is okay. This is Victoria Park Cemetery, which we were just about to talk about. Uh, uh, that. Uh, um, At least, I think. Anyway, yes, because this is Meath Gardens uh, in, in Bethnal Green, is a still surprising oasis behind Roman, uh, the Roman Road, and was one of the largest grounds that laid out by Fanny for the MPGA. It opened as Victoria Park Cemetery in the 1840s, but it had fallen into disuse uh, when the MPGA was given permission to reclaim the area as a park. Her workforce consisted of 30 unemployed men and she supervised them for a year. There were times in the winter when the ground was hard to dig and uh, the whole area was laid to grass and it's quite odd when you go there you can still see the undulations that uh, uh, obviously settlement that probably represented its former use as a graveyard and plain trees, limes and trees of heaven still provide shade and the, there were of course uh, originally also flower beds, playgrounds and a sandpit, I mean uh, there's now new beds, entered through the gothic portals um, that um, uh, signalled uh, its previous purpose, it must have then been an impressively airy space in a dense and ramshackle built up area and it still really does have a very otherworldly charm in South London, Myatt's Field in Camberwell opened in May 1889. At 14 acres, it was even larger than Meath Gardens and Vauxhall Park, and it was laid out by Fanny for the MPGA with the assistance of 230 unemployed men. So, I mean, she really did uh, uh, exercise uh, control over all these. And as well as parks, the MPGA funded and Fanny Wilkinson designed playgrounds um, because that was part of its original name, um, uh, the, the P-bit of the MPGA, and because uh, the MPGA was keen to provide children with rational recreation. Although her work for the MPGA is fully documented in that association's printed records, there's nothing to tell us about the way she worked. I mean, that's why it's such a pity that there are no papers or anything. And there's only a brief reference in her involvement with Myatt's Field, um, which was reported in a journal called the English Women's Review in 1888, 
that reveals that she did at this time have an assistant named as Miss, Miss Sievkin, daughter of the eminent Swedish physician. I think he was actually physician to the to Queen Victoria at the time. I think we may assume that for most of Fanny's uh, time as landscape gardener to the Curl Society in the MPGA, she had a woman assistant working in her office, which and this office was always based in her home, um, which uh, became Six Gower Street. Um, there is a, a movement to try and get a blue plaque for her, but uh, I don't know if she'll make the cut. Um, it's quite difficult to get women through. Um, she was willing to take pupils in landscape gardening and it may be that her assistants were in fact serving a pupillage. When interviewed uh, in 1890 she explained that the lady, I mean, Emmeline Sieveking, uh, now with me, has been my pupil. She makes tracings of my plans, goes about with me and at the end of two years can do something on her own account. I'm always willing to take two or three pupils but my terms are not low. I cannot uh, receive anyone at less than a hundred pounds a year. It would not pay me for my own trouble and expense. And I think she was quite hard-headed, you'll agree. Eight years uh, later, in 1898, when she made her first attempt to break with the MPGA, her assistant was Evelyn Alkey, and in 1904, when she did finally resign, Madeleine Agar, who had been working with her, became her successor. Uh, even for two people, the amount of work accomplished over the years is impressive. Apart from the wide range of parks and gardens in the inner uh, suburbs, Fanny and the MPGA effected change at the very heart of the capital. For instance, in 1886 she planted trees in the churchyard of St Martin's in the Fields, in 1888 laid out tower gardens, and in 1900 the churchyard of St John Smith Square. And in addition, in 1889 she was associated with an important development in women's emancipation when for the MPGA she arranged to provide boxes of evergreen to screen the new conveniences for both sexes in Piccadilly Circus, particularly to screen the ladies' retiring room. Although the gardens are not always maintained with the care that the MPGA expected, it's still possible in many cases to see the bones of the original designs. However, it's well nigh impossible to reconstruct exactly what was planned in the MPGA gardens, uh, for no plans remain, as I say, uh, in the archive, or um, none of the coloured plans that I know that she exhibited at the Women's Art and Industry section of the Glasgow exhibition in 1888, or at the 1893 Chicago exhibition survived. Fanny wrote no book on landscape or urban garden gardening, although she did in uh, around about 1900 prepare a leaflet which uh, was called Suggestions for the Planting and Maintenance of Trees in Public Thoroughfares and this was sent to all local authorities uh, in London. In this she stipulated that the most suitable trees for planting in London and other large towns where the atmosphere is more or less laden with uh, smoke are the London Plain and Dylanthus uh, Glen than Julosa, um, while in the suburbs, horse chestnut, uh, catalpa, syringifolia, robinia, and nitin ash may be planted. This leaflet had been prompted by the difficulties in keeping alive the hundreds of trees that the MPGA had planted uh, along the main roads in London, such as Romford Road in East Ham, um, uh, along Mount Pleasant in Hoban, which I go up and down every day, and looking at the girth of the trees, I mean, it's quite likely that uh, some of them are from this original planting, and along Whitechapel Road and along the embankment of the Thames at Putney, and Iolanthus trees along the West Cromwell Road in 1900. The MPGA was on occasion asked to design uh, gardens to surround the fruit of the philanthropic endeavour of others and so Fanny Wilkinson designed the Browning Garden to complement the Browning, Robert Browning Hall Social Settlement in Woolworth, laid out the gardens of the Women's University Settlement in Blackfriars and the garden courtyard of the London School of Medicine for Women in Bloomsbury. And in 1891, entirely separate for her MPGA work, she designed a plan for the laying out of the grounds of the new hospital for women, which is Elizabeth uh, Garrett Anderson's hospital in the Euston Road. 
Pani uh, clearly enjoyed the work she did for the MPGA, but finally, uh, at the end of 1894, she wrote a letter of resignation to Lord Meath, citing her duties at the Horticultural College at Swanley as a reason that she could no longer attend MPGA meetings. Uh, she was now free to concentrate on her other role, which she had in fact held since 1902 as first woman principal of Swanley Horticultural College, which after uh, a period of prolonged plotting um, uh, right through the 1890s had been captured from the male students for whom it had been founded and turned into a college that provided women, and that is only women, with horticultural training. In fact, Fanny took over from her brother uh, Matthew Eason Wilkinson, who had been installed as a temporary principal in 1900. And incidentally, in 1908, he married Emmeline Seifking, who had been honorary secretary of the college's executive committee. So there were small and powerful groups <laughs> behind all these. The tensions between the men and women students have not only been one of gender, but also of class. The question, why did the men leave, was answered in the uh, in a 1916 issue of the Women's Farm and Garden Association monthly bu bulletin. Um, quote, From the first, the women who were attracted and continued to be attracted in increasing numbers were nearly all highly educated. To them, attendance at lectures, note-taking and sitting for examinations was a familiar event. The men's students, on the other hand, were chiefly of a different grade, sons of farmers, nursery gardeners, etc. They found themselves continually beaten as regards the theoretic side of their work uh, by the women on whom they were yet inclined to look down. They grew careless, unruly and troublesome, and so they were swept away by the incoming tide of women gardeners. Anyway, it was, of course, one thing to train women gardeners and another to ensure that once they had completed their course, they would find employment. Uh, but uh, this new breed of scientifically trained women gardeners were particularly welcome in the gardens of mildly radical, uh, and even more radical, middle class women. Workers in the suffrage cause put principle into practice and supported Swanley. Uh, for instance, Elizabeth Garrett Anderson employed a series of Swanley trained gardeners at Old House, her home in Alborough. Swanley um, was firmly established by 1922, when Fanny Wilkinson finally retired as principal. From then until her death in 1951, she enjoyed an active retirement at Swanley Cottage in Snape, her garden there having been laid out for her in 1912 by Madeleine Agar. And uh, among the, the college um, students um, during the time she was there were um, some of the women who went on to be uh, um, the uh, leading uh, exponents of uh, uh, landscape architecture in the uh, 1920s, such as Brenda Colvin and uh, Sylvia Crow, which I'm sure you'll know more about. And uh, the fruit of all this research was actually a, it was quite a dense uh, chapter in the book I published called The Enterprising Women, uh, the Garrett, Garrett's and Their Circle. Um, I mean, there are extraordinary women who uh, just worked so well together on a whole range of, um, of uh, well, e efforts, enterprises. So it covers uh, uh, medicine, education, um, interior design, the land, uh, as, as well as publishing and art and architecture, and of course uh, politics. So um, Fanny uh, was very much uh, the centre of all this. Okay, thank you. Thank you.